Can you save hybrid seeds? What is a hybrid seed? What's an open pollinated seed? What's an heirloom seed? We're gonna find out. Hey everybody, Chad Cruiser here with Health and Homestead. And what are hybrids and can you save them? There's an idea out there that you cannot save hybrid seeds. And I'm gonna share with you both my experience and a farmer experience, a farmer friend of mine named Andy. Andy has a little bit different experience than I have had, but both of them give you a good insight into what saving hybrid seeds can be like. Well, first of all, let's talk about, let's get to terms. What do these terms actually mean? So hybrid. To give you an illustration, this is not technical terminology, this is just an illustration to help it make sense. What is a hybrid? So a hybrid is kind of like taking a, if you took a Doberman Pinscher and you took a Chihuahua, you brought them together, they got together, they were attracted to each other, and they had a baby. And their baby, what would it be? Would it be a Doberman? Would it be a, would it be a Chihuahua? The answer is, well, it'd be a little bit of both. It would be a hybrid. And a hybrid is a mixture of two, um, we could say animals or plants of the same species that ended up getting a little too close and having a baby together. Well, maybe not a baby, but they end up uh, pollinating in this case, the one pollinates the other, and therefore now you have a hybrid. You have a mixture of the two. So in, in this mixture of the two, can the mixture be saved and then planted again next year? Some would say no, others would say yes. We're gonna talk about both my experience and Farmer Andy's experience. So now we have an idea of what a hybrid is, is but let's go on and let's talk about something called a open pollinated variety. What is that? So an open pollinated variety is a, an established variety. So for instance, at one point you had a a hybrid and then it, it had a baby and it had a baby and it had a baby or in this case somebody saved a seed of a, of a hybrid and then the next generation seed and the next generation seed and the next generation and over time it stabilized and you continue to have the same kind of variety you see that has the same characteristics let's say it's a squash with orange skin and maybe a general size to it and a just a general look to it and a general taste to it that is a open pollinated variety a variety that when when you plant the seed for it you're going to get the same results for instance not a not an orange variety but if you had a hopi pale gray squash and this was this was a, a variety that was saved by the native americans and if you planted that variety kind of has a pale gray exterior, as you can imagine by the title, that if you save that, what would happen is the, the next year you'd get the same thing, and the next year you'd get the same thing. That is, if you didn't have any other varieties of the same species nearby that pollinated it, you'll get the same one and you'll be able to save it year after year. So that's an open pollinated variety. But what about the heirlooms? What's the difference? So an heirloom is always an open pollinated variety. They're always, every heirloom is open pollinated, but not all open pollinated varieties are heirloom. So what is the difference? An heirloom is simply a seed of a plant that has been saved for a certain amount of time and then it, you know, it gets named by somebody and after a time, maybe after years or after generations, they've been saving it. And so it's just a named variety like Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Aunt Molly must have saved that thing. And so, man, it got named by Aunt Molly and uh, it's been saved for who knows how long. And so what is it? It's an heirloom. So an heirloom is not really a technical term. So do you know how many years a seed has to be saved to be called an heirloom? Do you know? No, I don't either. I don't think anybody knows. It's just kind of a term that we came up with. So it's not really a technical term by any stretch of the imagination. But here, let's, let's now ask the question, can we save the seed of the hybrid? Well, obviously you can save the seed of open pollinated varieties. That's the whole point. That an open pollinated and an heirloom variety, you expect that if you're only growing that variety and you don't have any other varieties within a given space, it's different for different plants, how far you have to actually keep them apart. Some of them, like beans, generally they say keep them apart like 12 feet, you're good to go. And some other things you have to keep apart like a half mile or a mile with, without, or else they'll just cross-pollinate and you'll get a, a hybrid in the end. You'll get something different potentially anyway if they get cross-pollinated. So, but can you save the 
hybrid seeds. That's what we want to know. So I'm I'm going to show you an interview that I did just recently with a with a good farmer friend of mine, Andy, over at Good News Farms. But here's the thing: before you listen to that, I, w- I want to let you know the the experience he had has been different than the experience I had. So so you may start listening to him and you're like, oh, that answers the question, man. I, hey, that that's so. And then and then you're say, well, I don't need to hear anymore. But you're gonna want to hear the rest of my experience because both of them kind of give the whole perspective of what happens or could happen anyway when you save hybrid seeds. So I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna share with you the interview with Andy now. And so we'll just simply ask him, hey Andy, uh, can you save? hybrid seeds. And we'll see what Andy has to say for us. One of the neat things that we do here is we do save a lot of our own seed. And we, we started doing that years ago. Um, we're more convicted and convinced that that's something that as, as a gardener or a farmer that we need to have uh, experience in and knowledge of, especially with COVID-19, this 2020 with seed shortages and potentially having them next year. So we've um, We've been passionate about that. We're planning on saving more. And one of the, the, the myths of seed saving, especially with hybrids, is that uh, you can't do it. It's, it's just something that won't work out because you'll get undesirable characteristics from parent plants or you won't have the plant that you're, you're, you're hoping it to be. We've saved seeds now from some of our hybrids for four, five years, and we've, we've not seen that to be a problem. Every once in a while, you will get a, 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 an, an off-type plant, but um, that's not something that hurts production or, or your garden at all. If you are doing several different hybrids, you do want to be careful with pollination, cross-pollination. If you're, if you're in a greenhouse and you are pollinating with bumblebees or if you're outside, you have insects and other things pollinating. And so you do want to be, be cautious of that. That could affect it to some degree, so you may want to have your spacing and all that. But the, the myth is that you couldn't save seeds, that, uh, specifically hybrids. You, you can, and we've had good effects with that. And we've actually noticed that after about the third year of saving seeds that we've had a seed that is really tolerant to what we do here. Um, and what I mean by that is we found that it was more disease resistant. They said that would be the case. You'd lose your disease resistance. You'd, you'd get uh, less flavoring or whatever the case that they had bred it for, you would lose that. And we found that to be the opposite here with this, specifically our tomatoes. We found that uh, they're more healthy, more robust, more productive. They're used to our soil. They're, they're acclimated, I guess, for a better or lack of a better term, to our greenhouse, our growing. And so we've seen that they are more disease resistant. We've seen that our tomatoes are sweeter. So um, you can see that over over a period of a couple of years that you actually get a seed, if you're saving it, that is that is acclimated or climatized to your garden, your area, your growing area. So we're, we're, we're convinced and we'll continue to save our hybrids that that is something that works and um, it can save you money. Hybrids tend to be expensive. And so that was in part one of the reasons we started. Now we just enjoy doing that and um, learning from that as well. And one of the reasons that prompted us to this, we, we grow peppers and cucumbers and um, tomatoes, and specifically the peppers and tomatoes, the seeds, the hybrids for that are in high demand. And so they, they could be expensive. And at times we've seen those be up to 50 cents or 80 cents per seed. So that really prompted us to do some research and then just start to experiment on our own. And, and now we have found that we're able to save those seeds and, and um, and it's worked out you know, wonderful. And we're starting to reach into other areas, save seeds that aren't as expensive just for the ex- experience of that, but also hoping that we will get those ones acclimated to our, our growing here in our area and have a seed that's specific to what we're doing here at our zone, in our elevation, and in our greenhouse. So you might be thinking, this is fantastic. I can just buy the my favorite hybrids, save the seeds, everything is gonna work out perfectly. And I hope it does, but hey, I had a different experience than Andy did with the different plant. So I, myself, was growing something called the Beefy Resilient Grex Bean. And what I did was I wanted, I wanted to save that bean. And uh, now, what is a Grex? A Grex is a real multiplicity. So what happened was the, the seed breeder, Carol Deppi, had accidentally crossed two different beans. She wasn't trying to. She was actually uh, just had them, you know, growing not super near, far enough that they shouldn't have crossed, but somehow they got pollinated and boom, you get this just multiplicity of different looking beans coming out of what should have been a stable variety. And so she then sold them because they were very, they had fantastically high yields. She said very good flavor. And so she began to sell them as a Grex, as this multiplicity of genes. And then you yourself could save whatever ones you want or select the ones you wanted so that you could basically create your own variety if you would like to. And so I bought them to try them out. And 
the they had a real mixture. Now I want to show you first. I chose beans that looked identical. So I that had this, you know, they were the largest beans, they were they had this nice brown color, but but there were a bunch of colors in in general, but I only picked the ones that I wanted to actually that's what I wanted to harvest. So that's what I did. I planted them. And what did I end up getting? I want to show you what I ended up getting. I ended up getting something that looked like this. You notice you have these yellow ones, you have these brown ones. I even had some black ones mixed in there. Total different colors, total different sizes, and uh, just they don't look like they would have come from the same thing at all. But yet everything I had planted looked identical, at least close to identical, a little bit different sizes, but same, no, actually generally the same size, generally the same color. And I got just this multiple looking beans that have look like they're not related at all. And so these are hybrids now. I can choose what I can do if I want to stabilize the large variety because you notice I still have some of the large variety over here. I've separated them out and if I continue to do that year after year over time if I only select the large brown ones over time I should be able to stabilize that variety. You say well who cares why, why waste all the time. Now. I, you don't have to do this. You could just get a, a regular open pollinated variety, not have to go through all this trouble. That's really the easiest way to go about it. it I mean, it really is. But when when I tried these, they had they're they're meant to be dry beans like pinto or black beans. But when we ate them, because I thought oh, I'll just see what they taste like as a green bean, and when we cook them up as green beans. They taste straight up like chicken. They tasted like chicken and I ate it. I was like, man, these things taste like chicken. And my brother-in-law and my wife, they're like, yeah, yeah, I taste it. They taste, they taste like chicken. I've never had a bean that tasted like chicken. And so I thought, well, it'd be very cool to save these. And so I'm gonna keep trying. If I get it to work, great. And if I don't, you know, uh, it's fun anyway. And so it's just a great experience. So you may try it and it may work fantastically for you, or maybe you'll have an experience like I did. So either you'll have Farmer Andy's experience or you'll have my experience. And it's fun either way. If you've tried it, I'd love to hear your experience in the comments. Tell us what you've done with it. And uh, secondarily, if you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, the, you know, the like. And if you hit the subscribe button, hit the, the bell. And uh, thank you very much. God bless and have a fantastic day.